Hey everyone, I'm Rose Emoji from PlayingPioneer.com. I'm here with Carnage Carnes, and uh, we're introducing a new video series uh, called the Lead the Way. It's original to PlayingPioneer.com, and the idea of the series is we'll have somebody, this time me, who has never played a deck before, and then somebody, this time Carnage, who has top top eight at a challenge with a deck or five out of league with a deck um and the new player will actually be playing the deck um on magic online and the the resident expert uh will will be helping through the the lines and the mulligans and just how the deck works in general um so today we're going through esper grease fang combo uh, the Parhelion 2 Grease Fang combo, which again, I have never played. Um, Carnage has has been fourth in a challenge with this deck, 5-0 uh, to league with the deck, and top 8 at a showcase with the deck, or top top 15 in the showcase. Top 15. <laughs> nice. 11th place. Nice. I'm, I've seen this deck list before. Uh, I've played against it a few times. Uh, I've never been on this side of it. So, why don't we start by going over the deck? No problem. Um, so starting with the lands, uh, in my opinion, the downfall of this deck is that the mana base is absolutely terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's something that I'm working on and changing regularly, as I think that the deck struggles sometimes with colors. Uh, but honestly, uh, we I started off the deck with three mech hangers originally, and now I'm down to one. Uh, it's become less and less impressive as i've played with the deck uh, i still like having one just as a you know a way to be able to crew a vehicle without it uh without having grease fang or a creature or anything like that but um i could see a future where mech hanger just isn't a part of the list whatsoever um i'm playing every single blue white dual land uh besides glacial fortress i guess but we don't have many planes um that i possibly can just to hope that i can have those colors uh, outside of the um, lands, uh, Silence is probably the biggest addition uh, to the deck that I that I top forward with versus the deck that I had in the top 11 of the showcase. Uh, Silence was a card that was brought in by uh, Connor Mann, uh, who's also playing Esper Parhelion and is maybe one of the other big players of it. Um, it has by far over exceeded my expectations and I recently was only playing two and actually for this video I asked you to add a third as I think that it helps protect the combo and it also has some utility against some of the other better decks in the format like Jeskai Ascendancy and Hidden Strings, uh, even, even Phoenix, uh, this card can really do some work. Uh, outside of that I'm probably the only player still playing Tezzeret and still playing quite a few Tezzeret. Most people have moved over to playing Karn uh, and Esper Parhelion. Uh, I just haven't been all that impressed with Karn. I think that mostly all he's doing is crewing uh, vehicles, which uh, Tezzeret himself can do. Uh, and he's the ultimate looter, which is ultimately our game plan at the end of the day. Uh, recently, I added a Sky Sovereign, which is just another way to uh, have another vehicle, plus to have more artifacts to be able to throw away uh, to Thirst of Knowledge and uh, Tezzeret. Outside of that, the list is pretty stock to what you'd see most people in Esper Parhelion playing. We've got the four Grease Fangs, the four Esper Parhelions, and our eight uh, preferred discard outlets, which are our four Faithful Mending and our four Thirst for Knowledge. Great. Uh, if we move, Great. yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I, I want to know, um, the third silence is replacing one disruption protocol. Um, uh, yeah, disruption protocol. Honestly, getting the f last one out is probably would be the next step uh, in the deck. I just think that originally uh, the format counter spells were pretty good, um, but now the format's just way too aggressive to be. Uh, sitting back and waiting for people to play things. We want to be more reactive, which is why I'm playing four portable holes, two glass caskets, four March of the Other World, the light, as we're just really trying to react to what our opponents are doing and not sit back and wait to counter an important spell. Um, so I've just found it a little, little bit less impressive with the way the meta games went, but I could see a world where it becomes important again. Let's get into the sideboard a little bit. 
Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, no, I know a lot of people love to be uh, pretty heavy on deafening silence. I have found the card to be very powerful, but at the same time, um, I think the metagame is changing a little bit from the decks that are impacted by deafening silence versus the ones that aren't. Um, for example, like in the showcase challenge, I didn't play Phoenix once, I played Jeskai Ascendancy once. Uh, and that was pretty much it. So I've moved down to being just one deafening silence. Uh, we filter through our deck quite a bit too, which is something that maybe a lot of people um, don't take into account. So we do find some of those like golden sideboard cards more often than a deck that's just drawing, you know, one card a turn where we could be drawing five on a turn depending on the, the point of the game. So I went with a little bit less on some of those numbers. Um, like Deafening Silence, same with Graph Digger's Cage uh, and Pipping Needle. Those are ones that I think are really, really good in matchups and that we we're kind of going to look for. Uh, Pipping Needle is something that maybe seems strange and why would that be any good? Um, the thing that I use it the most for is the Jund Sacrifice mm. and the new like Red Black Blood or yeah. uh, Anvil deck, whatever they're really calling it at this point. Uh, it's just a way to turn off some of their like important enchantments or artifacts. Uh, so I've been using it for that. Uh, Graph Digger's Cage is mostly just for Winota. Um, I don't really use it for many other things outside of that. Uh, I don't think it's a good card to bring in versus Phoenix. Maybe we'll get into that as we go through the video, uh, but I don't really like it against Phoenix. Um, Heliod's Intervention uh, was a card that I came up with uh, for the Showcase Challenge. It performed very, very well in there. Uh, my worst matchup with this deck is definitely Jund, as um, it's hard to interact with all of their enchantments and that they have Karn. Mm -hmm. So I thought of having a card kind of like almost uh, Modern's Force of Vigor that can hit multiple enchantments or artifacts at one time. And it has double utility as I can use it in the burn matchups just to gain a bunch of life to keep myself alive for me to put together the combo. Uh, another um, one was Spell Pierce that I recently put in for the Showcase Challenge as my thought sees, as it sounds weird, but I wanted to be able to have a one mana interaction that can like be a turn one play uh, and you know help me when I'm on the draw. So I've been using Spell Pierce to either counter uh, Thoughtseize decks or uh, you know decks that are quick, like uh, in white black and chat uh, auras, mm -hmm. or the Jund or red black Anvil decks, as I just want to hit that two drop that they're going to try and put down on the battlefield before I can untap and you know start to play some things. And Hullbreaker, uh, Hullbreaker Horror is just for the control matchup as I think it's a matchup that I used to be really, really bad against. I've considered taking it out since I added in Silence, as Silence has helped shirt up that matchup, as I can use Silence on the turns uh, that I want to go off, and they have to counter that, which normally will free up my Grease Bang. But uh, Hull Breaker Horror has definitely won me a lot of control matchups there. It's very, very unexpected, and most of the time, control decks just fold to it on the spot. Great. All right. Uh, let's, let's jam some games with this. All right. Can you see this okay? Yes, I can. And I would say that this is definitely a mulligan. Okay. Uh, so the reasoning being is we have absolutely no clue if, uh, Supreme Verdict is going to be any good in this matchup. Uh, we didn't see a Loris, uh, spoiled mm -hmm. or revealed. So we probably can conclude they might not be a creature deck. And outside of that, our only action is going to be on turn three, which is just way too slow at this point. All right. Oh, this is a one lander. <laughs> this is a one lander. This isn't better. I guess we're going to five. Uh, I wouldn't say that this deck necessarily mulligans badly as we filter through quite a bit of our deck. And especially in game one, our combo is going to be even better than it would be in post sideboard games. So it's possible that we can open up a great five. Okay. Let's try, Let's try it. There we go. Okay. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good five. Pretty it's... good five. Okay. All right. Let's keep it. Our yeah, opponent's at uh, seven. I would probably throw away uh, a, one of the marches and more than likely a land. And I would probably throw away the uh, henge pathway. And yeah. pray to God that we can draw a land three and four. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I would I, I would lead on the beach as we're making absolutely no play this right. turn. Let's see what we're 
playing those. Yeah, let's see it. Was that verdict going to be good? Absolutely not, probably. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Another Grease Fang, not so great. Um, uh, I guess we're going we're we're to on... put that on Island, even though uh, we probably need the black for Grease Fang. We have a lot more cards that are going to need double blue or uh, blue-white, so we'll play it, hopefully, and hopefully it works out. All right. Right here, we're just crossing our fingers for land. We do play 24, so odds are pretty good that we should draw one in our first two draws, but... Yeah, it's it. Oh. Ooh, okay. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> here we go. Maybe we will be seeing some creatures. Yeah, maybe. It's not a terrible draw. We can use it here just to get them off of colors. Yeah. Uh, and get. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be the one that sacrifices all of the uh, enchantments to... I forget what that format enchantment is called. So I would probably play Portable Hole, take the presence, and... Oh, you're, maybe that that's you're putting them on uh, Enigmatic Fires? That's what I'm putting them on. Uh, okay. But yep. I, could, yep. I could be completely wrong. All right, let's go. Might get more information here. Oof. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. So yep. that new enchantment deck that's been running around. Yep. All right. Looks like that verdict would have been really good. <laughs> you never know until you try it, right? Is this this new oh, enchantment? Again, so this is not going well. Is this new enchantment deck uh, Bant, or is this is this new? I sh it, yeah, uh, I mean, I've seen some people running around with mostly the uh, Silesnia, uh version, but I mean, adding blue can definitely be probably for like omens and stuff like that. I'm yep, surprised not yep. to see Yori on it. That's what they're actually doing. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm a little in the dark at what's going on over there. I can tell you what's enchantments. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's about all the information I could give here. Uh, putting back land looks like it was a bad decision too for us there. Um, you know, especially drawing the second Grease Fang and now all of our expensive spells. Uh, looks like we're probably going to get run over pretty fast. Uh, yeah, or, is there is there a, an opportune time to cast this march? Uh, honestly, I would probably still wait one one more turn unless they went and did something crazy. Um, just because taking four here is not going to be all that bad for us. And we're not going to just run out of Grease Fang if we do draw land anyway. So we can at least uh, use the march without having to throw away one of the Grease Fangs. But definitely next turn, if we don't draw the land, we're going to have to consider um, using it by throwing away a Grease Fang. Okay. There we go. There we go. Um, so yeah, I, shock I, that in. I, I would take I would take the two, yep. and I would probably get rid of one of the Shigekis. Um, it's going to be good utility both ways, as I think they're going to be able to bring back the Shigekis um, from the graveyard, and this way we'll exile it, so at least one of them is gone. Yeah, I would cast March on one of the Shigekis now. Um, I don't okay. know if there's really a reason to do it on their own turn. Uh, I would hit one of the Shigekis as it's going to take away. Uh, a bunch of damage that we're going to take. If we leave both Shigekis, we're taking uh, mm -hmm. six and maybe more when they play more creatures. So I'd go after the Shigekis. But honestly, uh, I'm in the dark pretty much on what's going to be more important in this matchup. Uh, I don't know if you've ever cast March before. Uh, yeah, not on, on not on MTGO. So are we yeah, are we exiling yeah, so a Grease so, Fang or just just paying mana? Just paying mana. So okay. I would cast. So you just click cast, yeah. and then you're going to pay. Uh, what you want to pay, and then done. It's actually an incredibly annoying spell to cast on MTGO, and it's even worse if you're going to uh, cast it by exiling something out of your hand. It can be pretty confusing. I think I spent a good three minutes casting my first march uh, on MTGO for the first time. <laughs> so sure enough, they do they have responded with the OC. I guess that's what the blue splash is for. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty surprised not to see Orion for the value on that. Yes. Yeah. We will see. They're copying so they're the, copy that the omen, triggered yeah. ability, and we are getting very outvalued at this point. 
We're uh, not too far away, though, from uh, being able to slam a Tezzeret, filtering through, and hopefully hitting the combo. Um, I'm not sure how prepared they are to deal with a Parhelion at instant speed and with the remnants that it's going to leave over with the two angels. Mm -hmm. So we might be able to uh, steal a game from them for that. But we are behind. Only a little. <laughs> Only a little bit. Uh, they put two on top both times, so that's pretty scary. Yep. It means, yep. It means, it means that they found things they want to cast. Uh, but to be completely honest, I'm more interested to see what they're doing than what we're doing at this point. Sun's Grace. Okay. Honestly, uh, that decision to throw back the Supreme Verdict hand is looking worse and worse with every player. <laughs> How many are we I main decking? Uh, we're only main decking one, so we're not going to be able to interact uh, with everything they have on board. Like I said, I think what we're going to try and do is steal the game uh, by putting a Parhelion onto the battlefield. Um, so here I would main phase the Faithful Mending as we want to hit um, a land drop this yeah. turn too. Um, so I would use, I would leave the beach open and I would use the Pathway and the uh, Godless Shrine to cast it. Uh, so I'd throw away a Grease Fang and the Dig Through Time as I don't think uh, mm -hmm. we're going to be digging anytime soon. Uh, I'd play the Hollowed Fountain Taps and pass the turn. All right. How many portable holes main deck? Uh, four portable holes main deck uh, and two glass caskets. Uh, yeah. We've been pretty unlucky to find mostly our spell spells like Tezzeret, Dig Through Time, uh, Double Grease Fang 2 doesn't look great here either. Wow, this is a brew of a deck. I love every moment of it. <laughs> Uh, we're pretty close to dead at this point. Uh, we pretty much need to hit Supreme Verdict next turn, or we're going to have to concede. Mm -hmm. But our Heliod's interventions are going to look extremely, extremely powerful. Yeah. Uh, and we have two Supreme Ver Verdicts in the board. Yeah, we have two Verdicts. We have uh, two Heliod's intervention. Uh, so we're going to be looking Oof. pretty good uh, Oof. on the sideboard games. They're really going off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Drawing two cards per per spell. All right. Let's see it. Verd verdict off the top? Yep. Uh, we could try and hit the nuts here, but I don't even know if that's good enough. Off of what, Tezzeret? No, I mean, we could Faithful Mending try and hit, like, land Parhelion. Okay, yeah, 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 Parhelion let's do it, let's that. do it. But I, honestly, I still don't think that's good enough, but hey, might as well try and roll. We found Verdict, but not yeah. enough lands. Not enough it, lands. So I also tapped our, I tapped our only black mana, so even if we did <laughs> do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're just going to concede, conceal information. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but that was a really cool. Uh, yeah, so they actually have no, I, they have no information about what we're running, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. I think they might be able to with the faithful mending if they're really tuned into the right, 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 right. We're we're probably the only deck playing faithful mending, but it yeah. could be anything. Yeah. Uh, so for the sideboard games here, we definitely want to take in the Heliod's intervention. Uh, we also want to bring in Supreme Verdict, and I would probably say that's it. Uh, they seem to be enchantments, but much more uh, creature heavy than mm -hmm. like actual enchantments. So I don't think bringing in things like uh, Spell Pierce or Dovin's Veto mm -hmm. are going to be all that good. Uh, Cage could have been good if we think they have uh, fi uh, Enmatic Fires in their deck, but I don't think that's the case. I think they're a very creature, like green-white with a little bit of a splash of blue for Omen. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would probably just stay stop there. Uh, I would take out probably the uh, three silences, as I don't really think we're right. going to be dealing with our combo uh, at instant speed. Yep. And I'd probably cut a uh, Tezzeret, as I don't know if he's going to be all that powerful. They might be able to attack him pretty well. Mm -hmm. He might be just a four mana draw two, discard two, which isn't all that great. So I'd probably go with that. All right. So we're ha we have we've got a, three Supreme yep. Verdicts. 
in the deck now. Um, Three Supreme Verdicts, uh, we've got uh, Otherworldly March, Portable Hole, lots of ways to interact with their cheap uh, enchantments, and uh, this looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, the only thing we're really missing here is a way to filter through our deck, but I think that we're going to be able to uh, Portable Hole their first play, and then kind of bait them into filling up the board and Supreme Verdict. I think we have all of our colors, so that's important too. Great. Uh, and two Grease Fangs, which are, you know, one half of our combo. Yeah. Have you have you played the um, Abzan version at all that's been going around against it I or have, played with I, it? I, I've played against it. I think our particular matchup against uh, that deck itself is really, really, really good. Uh, I haven't played with the deck. I really, really love the new list that's running around with uh, the four drop Soren Planeswalker with the Tassiger. Uh, I think it looks really, really cool and it's something that I'm like, dying to sleeve up. Yeah. Uh, I've, but it looks really, really cool. Another Grease Fang is not ideal here. Uh, but I play the watery grave tapped. That's the turn. Man, we're we are drawing grease fangs this uh, yeah this match. yeah. It's usually a good problem to have. I don't know if they can deal with three, so that's uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's possible. All right, we have a portable hole target. We well, have a portable hole target. There we go. Faithful Mending 2. That looks great. So I would play that on white. Yep. Uh, yeah. We're going to need it for the Verdict, and it allows us to double spell this turn. Mm -hmm. So we can Portable Hole using the uh, Pathway, and then hold up Faithful Mending. Uh, we, have a, we have a possibility here to turn for uh, Parhelion, which uh, would probably win the game. Uh, like I said, uh, in a lot of uh, conversations I've had, uh, that not many decks are capable of beating uh, Upar Helion on turn three or four. So end step, will Faithful Mending here. Uh, the way they tapped makes me feel like they might have a uh, Mystical Dispute or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to look... There we go. Uh, we're going to definitely throw away a Parhelion here. And probably another Grease Fang. I don't think we'll ever need three uh, at this point. And we're gonna untap and slam it. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. That's the cool part about this is that Mystical Dispute sounds like it's a really good card against us, but it actually doesn't counter. It doesn't Grease stop Fang, Grease Fang. Is, so we're about to do it. Problem. Am I am I in the Rat Gang now? Uh, you are in the Rat Gang now. If this actually uh, happens, let's do I sure do I have to get, get jumped in? <laughs> If I were you, I'd put a uh, a stop uh, in combat there, as you're going to want to maybe not miss the fact of crewing it sometimes. Okay. Uh, I've made that mistake the first time, too. Because Grease Fang brings back Parhelion and gives it haste, but it also needs to actually crew it uh, before you attack. And I'm one of those crazy stop people where I love stops everywhere because I get so nervous that I'm going to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Stop. Especially for my first time doing the rat <laughs> thing. All right. So we're going to pass gonna the combat. Go to combat here. Trigger's going to go. We're going to definitely yield to that. Bring that in. It auto selected it, right? <laughs> yeah, so you're going okay. to like, click OK here. All right. And then you're going to crew it. So crew four. Grease bang. And you're going to swing. I know how to do that. Bam. And then what's really, really cool about this is at the end of turn, uh, Grease Bang's triggered ability is going to bounce that Parhelion back to our hand, which means that we're going to essentially draw three cards next turn and get to throw away the Parhelion that we want to throw anyway. Um, so it's a really, really good combo. Uh, if you're ever in a situation where you're not sure to use Faithful Mending or Thirst for Knowledge first, it's always better to use Faithful Mending first as uh, Thirst for Knowledge really matters if you have a artifact in there. Right, okay, okay. So let's bounce that back to your hand. And they pretty much here have to deal with... All of these tokens. With, and... with at least one angel, be able to block your Grease Fang from attacking. 
And normally what that's going to do is that's going to tap them low enough that you're going to... Nope. There you go. <laughs> uh, it's going to tap them low enough that we'd be able to thirst for knowledge while they're tapped out and put it right back in. Uh, we didn't see anything new from game one, so I think we're just submitting yeah. this, right? I think, yeah, I think we're just going to resubmit. Uh, uh, like I was saying, uh, when we went into uh, game two there, uh, a lot of decks just can't beat uh, a Parhelion in turn three and four. Uh, it attacks 13 and leaves behind eight power. Uh, so it really demands a lot uh, to be able to get past that. And especially creature decks are really, really bad at managing that board state as they're only really going to be trading one for one most of the time and trading one for one is just not good in that situation uh this hand looks fantastic too uh we have all, right. all of our colors if we need them we have early interaction with portable hole and march and we have two ways to loot through our deck we're missing yes both combo pieces but it's going to give us and buy us a lot of time to try and find those pieces great We've got a cool channel land too. Yeah, yeah. If we draw too, if we draw too many lands off the top, we can use that as a spell. Uh, so that'll be good. Verdict's too, great. While, uh, just drawing it all. Uh, I would lead on the path, the Clearwater pathway, and I would put it on blue. I know that sounds weird, as that's our only black source, but it's more likely that we're going to want to use a lot of white with the current hand that we have. Uh, then we're going to want to have black, uh, as we don't have any grease bang in our hand at this point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If our hand, you know, stays the same that it is now, we're going to want to be able to have uh, double white for verdict. We're going to want to be able to have at least one blue for thirst for knowledge, and we're going to want to have double blue for Tezzeret. So we're already pretty demanding on the colors that we need. Uh, we'll just try and find black at some point in time if we need it. Uh, yeah, I would play the. You could play the deserted beach here, mm -hmm. or I'll keep up a land uh, too. But I don't think there's going to be anything that we're going to want to otherworldly march and pitch away a white card for. I don't think they have anything that 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 yeah. is that yeah. scary and must answer. Yeah, uh, they seem to have quite a slow hand here too, as they played tap land, tap land, and, and another one tap land. So I think they're playing Weaver? pretty much off oh. curve at this point. What the heck? Among okay. other permanents you control. So that's zero right now. So we just have that's to deal with that before it's not zero. All right. And that triggers at the beginning of their upkeep, is yes. that it? Yep. Yeah. So we don't have to deal with it this turn that's coming. Um, so we're going to be able... Wow, there we go. Uh, we're going to be able to thirst for knowledge uh, throwing away Parhelion on here. So pretty much the dream. We don't, uh, we don't need to deal with this right now? I, I, yeah, okay. I, I, I don't think so, because it yeah. triggers at the beginning of upkeep, so they're going to have to put a permanent in, and it'll trigger next. I would play the pathway on white here, yeah. as we already have double blue, and now we'll have double white. And like I said, if we draw more lands off of this thirst for knowledge, we can... Uh, I would hold it. I don't think there's a reason to play Oh, right, right. Uh, yep. I don't think there's any reason to give them the information that we are able to put a Parhelion into the graveyard. What we'd pr ideally love to happen here is we'd love them to tap out, we can put Parhelion in, into the graveyard and hopefully draw a Grease Fang and Black Source, and then we're off to the races at that point. All right. So at the beginning of the next upkeep, it's like an Aether Vial for yeah. two? I, yeah. yeah. So we'll uh, thirst for knowledge oh. here. Oh. oh! Oh, we drew the Grease Fang! No, I clicked the... Uh, ah, God. Uh, I would play the uh, Seat of the Empire here, and I would just Verdict. Uh, we'll deal with both uh, permanent right. on the battlefield. I'll just, and I'll just do it next turn. <laughs> My bad. It's all right. Honestly, at this point, I really feel like we we really have it all here. Uh, I mean, maybe this sounds hubris of me, but I think we're in full control at this point. Uh, we have a lot of spot removal, and we have uh, both of our combo pieces. We're still looking for a black mana, uh, but you know, there was no. Don't feel too bad. There was no guarantee we were drawing black mana in our other uh, three cards, so maybe we won't be able to do it. <laughs> pretty good chance, though. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good chance, but I'll give you the benefit of that. Maybe not. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, we'll find uh, like out. Said, it seems like they're missing land drops. They don't really have their lands coming together at this point. Uh, so we're looking pretty good at the loss. Uh, here, I would portable hole the uh, creature. Mm -hmm. And I would pass the turn, and we'll try and make the, the play at the end of turn. Thirst for knowledge, and hopefully hit uh, a black source. We're not looking for much. Not asking for much. In the next four cards, we need one black source. Uh, again, this triggers I, I for zero again. That, uh, this deck, even though it sounds like a dream to, you know, Parhelion, Grease Fang on turn three and four, it's actually much more of a reality than it seems like. Uh, it's really not all that difficult for us to uh, actually do that. Yeah, even if you, even if you f and miss a turn. Ah, so we're good here. Uh, artifact. Discard an artifact. Throw that Parhelion, Parhelion in. And uh, Mech Hanger looks at its absolute best here as it's going to tap for black because, mm -hmm. believe it or not, Grease Fang is a pilot. He is not just a rat, he is a rat pilot. <laughs> All right. We're going to go for it. Uh, it's possible that they have some sort of interaction here, but right. uh, I, I don't know what it would be at this point. Uh, probably in green and white would be maybe... Uh, a faithful absence, which isn't even that bad for us. Let's go to combat. All right. All right. We we've gotten this far. Let's see if we can uh, crew it up. Crew. Gonna attack. I'm, I'm slow playing this so bad, so I don't miss any of these triggers. Oh, it's okay. Uh, honestly, like I said, uh, I missed it my first time too because for some reason you just assume that it's gonna like auto crew because it says it gives it haste, uh, but it really doesn't. And I clicked right through and then it bounced back to my hand. And, and the rest is history. It's all bad. Do we need to portable hold this for any reason? I don't think so. It's not. It's it's really not doing anything. Uh, they need to have a permanent on the battlefield at the time uh, that it triggers on upkeep. So if, next turn, if they, had, if they had blue mana, I would say yes, uh, because they'd be able to play an omen at end of turn, and right. map, um, okay. the omen would help trigger it. Uh, but with no blue mana, like I said, our opponent's draw just really didn't come together in game three. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a bit of a shame. So if I've learned anything so far, it's that next turn we were going to cast another thirst for knowledge, dump this parhelion into the yard, crew it at the beginning yeah. of combat again, and do the thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, again, that's why I find Tezzeret super important there too, uh, is Tezzeret could have done the same thing. Had we had no Thirst for Knowledge, we could have played Tezzeret. He would have drawn two cards, discarded only one, because he has the same kind of trigger as Thirst for Knowledge, where if you have an artifact, you don't have to discard as many. Um, so he would have also done the same thing uh, as that, plus put pressure on them to answer him. So while we're waiting for game two, uh, let's go over game one a little bit and what the, I mean, it wasn't exactly a meta deck that we were playing against, um, but let's go over the matchup a little bit and uh, where our strengths were. Sure. Uh, so that was it. As you saw uh, in that game, uh, the deck is really, really good, uh, especially game one against creature decks. Uh, we had one portable hole still in our hand, uh, two otherworldly uh, march in our hand, or march of the otherworldly light. Uh, so we had uh, tons of ways to interact with cheap creatures, enchantments, artifacts, anything that they're really playing. Uh, so that's really why I find the deck never really gets bad matchups uh, against creature decks. It's pretty much all we want to see is creature decks uh, one after the other as they struggle to interact with our combo at instant speed. And we just have so much cheap removal for what they're trying to do. And is that what you've been seeing? Um in in yeah, the, the so recent I, leagues I, I, and yeah so i built the uh, uh we could we could keep this hand this hand looks absolutely amazing mm -hmm. uh so uh we have our discount artlet we have both pieces of the combo and we have cheap interaction uh and portable hole and glass casket 
And if we happen to be playing against a deck that cheap interaction isn't good against, we can toss it away with Faithful Mending too. So our lead on the Hollow Fountain, we got on the play again, which is fantastic. Uh, but yeah, back to what you were saying. Uh, I always try and play a deck that is either really, really aggressive at the beginning of a new format, which I would say this is a new format with a new set coming out, or a deck that's really, really good against aggressive decks. Normally people tend to trend towards aggressive decks uh, at the beginning of a format. Oh, here we go. Perfect. For yeah. Target. Yep. So we just need to draw a third land and we're uh, uh, yeah, we're we've living got a the dream. Of looks at it uh, with uh, Faithful Mending. So what I would suggest here uh, is to use the Glass Casket over the Portable Hole. Uh, as next turn, it, they're really only going to be able to play something with converted mana cost two or less, and we'll be able to portable hole and faithful mending. Where if we did it reverse, we wouldn't be able to answer something important and faithful mending the other way. Nice. Okay. We're going to play this on white, right? Uh, honestly, I don't really think it matters. Uh, but yes, because uh, we'll be able to play the other pathway on uh, the other color. But yeah, it might seem counterintuitive to. Glass Casket just because you're saying like, oh, Portable Hole and deals with uh, ones or twos and this can get the three. Uh, but we're really not even trying to care about what they're doing on turn three. Uh, we're going to try and combo instead. Mm -hmm. So next turn, we're going to try and find a Black Source. That's all we need to find in our next uh, three cards. And, or four cards, actually. In our next four cards, we need to find one Black Source and then we're good. So I don't really think we're we care about what they're doing on their turn three. Yes, yeah, so we're in a uh, we're in like, a really good place looks here. Looks like, it, yeah, it looks like we're playing Winota, I think. Uh, so this portable hole looking good. There There's a black go. source. A black source. Yep. So I would play the portable hole here on the Prosper Singkeeper. I would play the pathway on blue, and pass the turn. So the worst case scenario is that they play an elite spellbinder. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, af outside of that, nothing else is really that bad. I mean, if that happens, we we respond with the faithful mending. No. Uh, no, because honestly, at that point, our combo is just messed up regardless. Uh, because they'll either take the faithful mending and make us cast it as a four, or they take the grease fang and make us cast it as a five. So we're still not going to combo next turn regardless, unless we get really, really, really lucky. Uh, uh, we'll respond to this yeah. though. That's for sure. So we're responding and to this because while this is on the stack, um, in case anyone's not familiar, uh, when an opponent casts a spell during your turn. Uh, they get a token, so before it hits the battlefield, we want to cast our spell on their turn. Yes, exactly. No reason to give them an extra token when we know what we're doing here. We're discarding. Uh, so we're, yep, we're going to throw away the Parhelion and the Deserted Beach. Okay. Um, so this is going to be really, really cool next turn. So this hand right here guarantees we win the game. Uh, we absolutely cannot lose the game at this point. Uh, so for those of you who maybe don't see it, next turn we're going to cast um, Grease Fang using the Mech Hanger. We're going to leave up white, and then in their upkeep, uh, we're going to cast Silence, and it means they can't cast the spell next turn. And then we attack with the two leftover pieces of Parhelion, and we just win the game. Uh, there's nothing that they can do uh, at all. So. This is why I was saying at the beginning, uh, Silence just looks so, so good uh, in this deck, as it either protects our combo or just guarantees that they can't disrupt what we leave over. Yeah, I mean, if this was a, a disruption protocol, it would be... Yeah, exactly. It would just look terrible here. Yeah. Uh, it would still allow them to... I mean, honestly, in Winota, they're not really going to be able to cast anything that you know, screws up our combo. But, you know, for example, if they somehow have some sort of, you know, board wipe or something, and you just can see. Yeah. So we didn't get but, to play yeah. out the silence, um, yeah, which we, is probably fine, because I could have I could have missed the upkeep stop. I've, <laughs> I'm known to do that. Uh, so uh, assuming yeah, it is Winota, so... um, we're going to bring in Graph Digger's Cage, right? 
Yeah, yeah. So that's the only reason, pretty much at this point, I have it. I bring it in against Jund if I think they're playing Bolas's Citadel, but Jund has pretty much moved away from that at this point. Um, so it's really just for Winota. Um, outside of that, uh, um, I would bring in the, the Supreme Verdicts as a way to clean up what they've got going on, and, and uh, we'll take out Disruption Protocol, as we were just talking mm -hmm. about how terrible it would have looked in that situation. Um, I would also shave again on a Tezzeret, as I don't think we need both of those, and I would shave on a Silence. Uh, it, as yeah. we were saying, yes, it looks super, super good in that one situation, but a lot of the times, uh, casting a Silence, they're not going to be able to interact on our turn. Uh, unless maybe they play something in the sideboard, but Winota's not known to have much uh, creature removal at instant speed. Yeah. So if we talked about at the beginning of the video, a lot, uh, enough people are playing Karn, the Great Creator, instead of Tezzeret, Betrayer of Flesh, right? Um, yeah. If we So we've boarded out one Karn in both matchups. If I mean, sorry, one Tezzeret in both matchups. If they were Karns, would you have still boarded them out? In those same matchups? I yeah, I, I, I would have boarded probably all of them out. Uh, the only reason in the last two matchups we boarded them out is just because I, I really think that we're not trying to, you know, drop a four drop uh, and just like say, okay, that's the game. Uh, that's the only reason. It's not because Tezzeret himself is actually bad here. It's just that I don't think we need things that cost a lot of mana as we're going to be trying on four to cast Supreme Verdict or combo off. So I just think he clashes a little bit with that. And I think Karn would do the same. The only utility Karn would have here is that he could find a Graph Digger's Cage in the sideboard. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's good enough. Right. Uh, this hand here, uh, I'm going to lean towards keeping it. Uh, it might sound a little bit crazy. Uh, but we have Parhelion. We have a way to throw away Parhelion. And we have two ways to interact. Mm -hmm. um, and that's good enough to me. We have all of our colors, quote unquote. Uh, we just need another land. So uh, we're on the draw. So we've got high chances of just drawing naturally into that. Um, something that's really cool about Parhelion 2 is that it's a white card. Um, so right. it's pit right. to March of the Otherworldly Light. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's just say, for example, uh, the first turn here, they drop an Elvish Mystic. We can actually hit that Elvish Mystic with another, uh, with a March of the Otherworldly Light by throwing away a Parhelion, which is, we don't really need two of them for anything. Best case scenario. Uh, portable hole would have done the same thing. Uh, so we're playing Godless Shrine. <laughs> yeah, tapped. Godless Shrine, just conserve uh, like total as it might be under attack a little bit. So we've got two more draw steps to naturally draw our third land. And once we draw our third land, our entire hand is unlocked. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a lot of interactions. So next turn, we can either use a March of the Otherworldly Light or a Portable Hall to hit whatever we're going to play here. Uh, against Winota, the most important thing is keeping them off creatures uh, for Winota. So uh, even though a uh, portable hole on a um, Proctor's Innkeeper seems bad, it's really, really... Seems fine to me. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what happened there. Yeah. Let's queue up for a third one. And uh, <laughs> All right. How's this looking? This is really bad. Uh, we do not have any white, we do not have a second land, and we have a lot of expensive spells. This hand is super, super close. Had any card but Grease Fang been a land here, we probably would have kept the hand. But it's just a little bit too greedy. On the draw, you might have been able to talk me into keeping it um, a little bit more, which we were, but, uh, you know, for purposes. This is also terrible. This just seems to be our... Uh, our thing here, if we do mulligan, we're going to five all the time. Right, yeah. Uh, this hand's going to have to do. I don't think it's particularly good, but yeah. um, it's got lands and spells at this point. Uh, so we'll keep. Uh, we're going to throw away Protocol, as I think it's the weakest card in the deck, and uh, probably a Silence here. Uh, we have no right. clue if it's going to be any good. Yeah. And, and uh, it's going to be weakest if we're just casting it to stop them from playing spells. So what's the what's the swap for the last protocol? Uh, 
Honestly, at this point, I'm not quite sure. It's probably what I'm... Ooh, great draw. Uh, what I'm going to be working on uh, all through this weekend is finding out what that last swap would be. Um, I'm hesitant to make it another silence, as I think four is maybe too many silences. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely could be talked into uh, silences. It's like I said, I think it's been the biggest addition to this archetype, uh, helping to protect the combo and stopping people. Wow, this is... Our draws are very good. Uh, we can play uh, planes here. Yeah, I don't think it matters too too much, and uh, we'll faithful mending at the end of the turn. Uh, so, like I said before, even though we didn't know if they were a creature deck, we kept the glass casket, and now it doesn't look very good. Mm -hmm. But um, we filter and are able to throw away bad cards in our game ones and even in sideboard games. So we're just gonna toss it away here, as it looks like we're playing against blue white control. Looking more and more like blue white control here. Um, yeah, we playing this face. This is where this this is where Tezzeret, uh looks so much better than Karn in this matchup here. I right, will faithful mending. Uh, we'll throw away the glass casket here, and the other Tezzeret. and probably the additional uh, Tezzeret. That wasn't a Parhelion. No, that would have been uh, pretty good. But uh, I suspect that they have a counter spell here, so mm -hmm. whatever we play first is probably going to get countered. How has the control matchup oh, been for you? Wow, uh, the control matchup is better than it looks on the face of it. Again, um, Faithful Mending is two spells. Uh, we filter through our deck quite a bit, and that's when Silence is going to be at its absolute best. So we can play the Watered Grave here. Uh, we want to so shock it in, right? Yeah, because we can flash back drew, Faithful Mending. Yeah, we will flash back that Mending. We drew the Parhelion off the top. Um, so if for whatever reason they tap out here for anything at all, uh, we'll probably just win the game on the spot. If they don't, then we'll see what we draw. What have the what have the Neon Dynasty additions to Blue White Control have given you the most trouble? Um, honestly, not really anything. Uh, I don't find that they really got all that much. Uh, Otherworldly Light is probably the card that they got, you know, the most that does a lot. Um, but I don't think it hurts this particular deck that much as before that it would have been. Uh, so we're gonna toss the Parhelion and the Portable Hole. As, or, as the portable holes is probably going to have no utility here. Uh, second Grease Bang is really, really good here mm -hmm. as it allows us to uh, try. If it doesn't work, at least we have another yeah, third, third one. Grease Bang is even better. <laughs> even better. <laughs> uh, so we're going to slam a Grease Bang here. And so if we, had, if we had a Silence in hand, would we be shocking in this Hollowed Fountain and playing the Silence? 100%. So if oh, we okay. had a silence here, we would be playing uh, the silence, we would be shocking in the hollowed fountain, and we'd be going off. This is where silence, like I said, looks the best, and it's why I could be talked into playing four of them. Yeah. As, Do we want to uh, shock in just... the hollowed fountain anyway, in case there's like a pay one counter? Um, or is nobody playing yeah, that? Honestly, I don't, yeah, I don't think there's much to lose there. Our life total is not uh, going to be attacked whatsoever in this matchup, and I mean, it's possible that they're going to try and use a sensor uh, on us, but like I said, I do not expect this to resolve whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, we're in a bad spot, though. Uh, this is probably the worst time to try and combo, as next turn they can untap and play Teferi, untap two lands, uh, and then we're in a little bit of trouble. The positive, though, is that uh, they'll only be able to use maybe like a Dovin's Veto or a Sensor, so we will be able to Parhelion afterwards if that's the case. So here we go, Faithful Absence. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that bad for us. Obviously, we'd want a combo here, but we do get a card out of it um, mm -hmm. at some point in time. So Not a negative exchange.
Um, in the sideboard, though, uh, we're going to look even better uh, against this matchup as we have two Spell Pierces, three Mystical Disputes, two Dovin's Veto, and a Hull Breaker Horror. Yeah, yeah. Turns out oh. we're also blue-white control. <laughs> exactly. Um, that's what I, I've said before. This is kind of very similar to like a modern Splitter Twin where we have a combo, but we're also just a control deck at the same time. Um, so this is really, really good for us. Uh, they're going to only be able to untap two lands, which means they do not have a counter spell uh, for Grease Fang. Um, so they're only going to be able to kill it, then, co then counter it. Silence off the top would be best case scenario. It's a land. Uh, might, uh, I would I would shock this in, mm -hmm. um, so that if you know they deal with it, or we can just you know use the clue. Uh, so we're gonna try and grease bang again. If this resolves good if it doesn't we're going to be in a lot more trouble as they're going to be fully untapped and having it to ferry mm -hmm. another fateful absence uh, looks like it looks like they have something oh might be a march of the other world we might right right as it seems like yeah so they're gonna throw so they did have the dovin's veto like i said um which doesn't really hurt us all that much again this is a bad exchange but not a horrible exchange as they've spent two cards to deal with our one card mm -hmm. uh the only thing that undoes this for us is that they have to ferry uh, if we could imagine a world where they did not play to ferry on five uh we would be way ahead in this matchup again we're one silence away from <laughs> Being, being, being able to combo off. So they're drawing a card here. Uh, we'll also draw a card at the end of turn with the clue token. Yeah. Um, something something that has come up before. Uh, not that I think disruptive protocol is all that great, but it is very good in this matchup. And them giving us a clue actually gives us uh, something to tap for our disruptive protocol. Um, believe it or not, uh, Azorius Charm is uh, pretty decent. Uh, it's not great, but it's actually not that bad uh, against us. It does put the Pargelion back on top. Right. Um, so they take less damage. Uh, it does still leave a, leave uh, behind the two uh, angels, but they can deal with that uh, easier than some decks as they have Supreme Verdicts. Oh, there we go. Oh. There we go. Uh, so what can they what can they do here? Have have two counter spells or? Uh, they could have two counter spells. Well, they could have a counter spell and a removal. Right, uh, right. But again, I mean, if they have that, uh, we're not doing. So yeah, well yeah. Anyway. Uh, oh, uh oh. Oh, oh. All right, we're still live. <laughs> we're, we're here. We're here. I'm gonna play this on white. Yep. Uh, I would play it on. I, I would play it on blue. No, I don't really think it all all that much. Matters, uh, oh, because we need that uh, blue black for yeah. Just because uh, when Tez, you know, if this doesn't go the way it does, we'll probably be playing Tezzeret. Uh, so we're going to be casting Silence here. Are we swinging anything at Teferi? I think so. Uh, I would try and kill Teferi here, um, just because that's the way that they're accruing card advantage. Uh, uh, I don't think putting them... So we're, we're going to attack for 13, and then uh, that puts them to 7, and leaves behind two angels. The problem with that is that I really think they can deal with one angel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't think that that helps us. We would still not be able to, and our second attack will kill them. So if we send both angels... Uh, at the Teferi, uh, we kill it, we still deal them 5, which puts them to 15, and then if they don't deal with anything, so they're going to counter here, um, so it leads me to believe that they might have uh, more removal, removal. Spell, but we're still going for it. Yeah. If we get into a, a Mystical Dispute War, this will be my first MTG Online Mystical Dispute War. 
that Ever. will be my one of many mystical, mystical <laughs> <of course. laughs> I played a lot of blue white control in Pioneer, uh, as I as I think it's really good once the format settled and you know exactly what cards you need to answer everything. Mm. I think. Oh wow! All right, so we win. Uh, I've said this before. It this combo feels like modern Splinter Twin. Uh, some people don't like to deal with it, and some people don't really understand the play patterns against it. So they just kind of concede as they think you've put together an unbeatable combo. I don't think I think Blue White is well equipped to beat us swinging with a Parhelion, but it's possible that his hand just wasn't. Uh, going to work. So what was going to happen there was we were going to be able to kill Teferi. Mm -hmm. uh, we were going to attack them for five. They were going to drop down to 15. Uh, we're going to get that Arhelion back. We're still going to have uh, 12 power on the board. And if their hand is not equipped to deal with that, they get one draw off the top to be able to deal with that. So it is possible that, you know, the odds are very slim that they would be able to get out from under that. Yeah. If their hand wasn't properly uh, equipped to get that. So we're going to bring in the Spell Pierces, the Mystical Disputes, the Dovin's Vetoes, and the Hullbreaker Horror. Um, we're going to be taking out uh, number Portable one, Hall. the March of the Otherworldly Light. Mm. Um, so this is something that's important. Uh, all of our spot removal is really bad, but keeping in artifacts versus keeping in non-artifacts is important to the deck as we have a lot of cards that say if you toss away an artifact, you right, to keep right. more cards in your hand. Yep. Um, okay. So we're going to uh, throw away the Supreme Verdict. And then we're going to throw away the two glass caskets. And one portable hole. So the way that the deck's constructed means that we have to keep bad cards in our main deck. And like I was just saying, the bad cards that we want to keep are artifacts mm -hmm. as they actually do mean something for us this hand is super super close and it would be very very easy of us to keep it as we're actually able to interact with something on one and we're one land away from unlocking our hand uh greedy me would keep this hand but for purposes of the video i would say we would mulligan. all right all right <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this hand is very good, uh, mm -hmm. so we're going to keep this. Uh, we're going to pitch the additional uh, Grease Fang. Uh, dig Through Time is going to be good, as I think we're going to be exchanging resources uh, throughout this game, and at one point in time, that's going to allow us to find more pieces. How do we, how do we deal with a turn to rest in peace? Uh, we actually have the answer in hand, so I would say that we're going to play Pathway on blue. And oh, okay. we have the yep. Spell Pierce. Yeah, yeah. So Spell, spell Pierce uh, is almost like having a silence, but also something that answers problematic cards for us too. I think uh, Spell Pierce is really, really good. Uh, it helps us protect our combo, and it, like you said, either counters a Rest in Peace or a Thought Seize or something like that, uh, that they're trying to do to interact with us. Wanna play? So this uh, is a tiny, tiny bit awkward, but uh, we'll play the Watery Grave here, uh, tapped. And pass the turn. So we would love to be able to hold up Dovin's Veto too, yeah, but yeah. I do think that Spell Pierce is pretty much a hard counter. Uh, you know, the only thing that can really get us is a Mystical Dispute if they went like Island, Rest in Peace Mystical Dispute. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, uh, Rest in Peace isn't an end-all be-all as we kept in three portable holes, uh, which can actually deal right. with the Rest in Peace. Right. All right, we were we got rewarded for our land sequencing here. Yes. Um, so we're good uh, to play the deserted beach, and now we can pretty much start doing. Uh, so either we're going to be countering something that's important, or we're going to be casting our thirst for knowledge, and seeing what we hit off the top with that. Uh, obviously, best case scenario is a parhelion. Uh, 
but any artifact will actually help us in this matchup as we're a pseudo control deck so we're also trying to fight over uh resources so the more cards we have the better um if thirst for knowledge is really just a draw three discard two uh doesn't look at its best in that situation mm -hmm. I think they're debating on doing something here, like maybe cycling a uh, Azorius Charm or a Sensor. Alright, Shark Typhoon. Oh, or a Shark Typhoon. Uh, nope. It would be good for us. 1-1 uh, one, one Shark isn't really going to uh, address our life total or make us scared in any way, and they're much, much better later on. So we're going to Thirst for Knowledge here. It's very possible that they counter this with a mystical dispute, but I think the way that their lands have come together, they wouldn't because mm -hmm. uh, they wouldn't be able to hold up like a dope speedo or something afterwards. Right. So I think they're going to let this resolve. It's a weird sequencing if you're on the other side of it. Like I said, I find sometimes this deck creates, okay, uh, sometimes creates like really, really weird play patterns uh, where people aren't really sure what are the important spells to counter and what aren't the important spells to counter. Um, so keeping this dig through time looks uh, better here, as it's also our only way to filter through our deck at this point. Uh, we drew Mystical Dispute, so that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just play that uh, tapped, as I don't think it adds any value uh, to anything that we're doing here. Yeah. So a lot of versions of this deck play absolutely no basics. I play one for this particular reason. As the Field of Ruin? You know, yeah, if you yeah. just field of ruined us at the end of our turn, that's pretty much just a uh, trying to bank a molten rain uh, on us, and they could lock us out. Of it. Right, right. Yeah. What's what's the basic land? It is a plains. Uh, it used to be an island. I switched it to a plains as we started playing many, many, many more cards that need just one white, like Silence, Portable Hole. So I've switched over uh, recently to a plains. Is there uh, ever a here... case for playing out a Grease Fang to swing four? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. Um, it doesn't look great. It's not beautiful. But um, like I said, we're also kind of a control deck and we're not... Uh, drawing lands, which is the worst thing that can happen to us in the control mirrors. So I think we've got to force some sort of action. So we're going to play Grease Fang here, uh, but it's not looking pretty for us. Again, the only thing we're really, really scared of them doing is playing a Teferi, mm -hmm. and we can counter that. Right. So we don't really have to worry about much else. Opponent is searching through our graveyard. <laughs> yeah, they're like, wait, wait, this doesn't make any sense. There's no part healing. I mean, this does allow in a world for us. Uh, I think we're going to let that resolve. Like I said, the worst thing that can happen to us is they untap and play it to Fairy. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not, it's not good. So playing a Grease Fang might seem weird, but it does allow for like certain draws now where if we draw uh, Thirst for Knowledge or Faithful Mending, right. we cast it, we could hit a Parhelion, and then we don't have to use extra mana of playing the Grease Fang out the braid our mana a little bit. And at worst, he attacks for four. Right, right. Yeah, it's uh, also hard. It's also easy to forget that he's a three drop and he has Four power. Four, three, three. yeah. <laughs> which, which is also just good on rate. Uh, yeah. Creature. Yeah. So, like I said, uh, worst case scenario here is that they play Teferi, but we do have a Mystical Dispute and a Spell Pierce, so we're not all that afraid. Nothing. Uh, so. What do we draw? Planes, it's not the worst. Um, it does make that field of ruins so so much worse for us. Right, um, but right. At least it's a land. Going to combat, yeah, swinging four. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're swinging in for four here. Uh, this is actually really good. Uh, we now have three counter spells and an attacker, so it does force them to do something uh, at some point in time. And the more that we interact and trade resources, the better the dig through time looks. So this does look really good for us right now. 
nothing bad happened, that we kind of tapped down low on our mana, and now we have all of the mana that we need to cast all of our spells. Um, so even if they do uh, Field of Ruin here, we did draw the planes, which yes is bad, but it does allow us to still have Dovin's Veto open mm -hmm. um, if they do take us off of our Deserted Beach. without saying but uh, something grease fang is legendary so we will not run out the other one right right uh, uh we'll uh we'll mystical dispute here uh, i don't think that narsa is inherently like terrible for us uh but like i said i actually think trading uh resources here is good for us as we want to fill up our graveyard a bit for dig through time right right and them tapping down wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It, like I said, if we draw any uh, discard spell, we can cast it, try and find a Parhelion, and combo off. Oof. Uh, another Dovin's Veto is now terrible. Uh, we're going to attack again for four, and that's the turn. We're one one spell away from being able to, uh, you know, enable that dig through time with five lands and a spell. Right. So I think we're in a really really good position here. Uh, like I said, it might seem like on the face that we're not very good against the control deck because they have cheap interaction for Grease Fang. They can counter things, but uh, we have so many counter spells in the sideboard. Uh, we have things right, like Silence right. that can, you know, kind of lock them out for a turn. And, you know, just playing a, a three mana, four or three in attacking with a bunch of counter spell up is also probably going to get the job done. Yeah, uh, I feel like I'm playing blue-white blue -white control. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, we're playing control with like one creature and that's going to be probably good enough. I highly doubt that they kept in Supreme Verdict, even though it seems like it's like, kind of good because it can clean up everything that we have left over after our prayer Helion. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also just such a bad card to keep in your hand. We're going to spell pierce this? Uh, no, we're probably just going to veto this. Yeah. If we only had one veto, I would actually consider just allowing this to resolve as... I feel like they're trying to bait counter spells out with the Narset because they want to line something like a Teferi. Mm -hmm. But since we have a second one, uh, we'll be fine. Then. All right, let's let's draw it. Let's do it. Yeah, we need to draw some sort of discard spell here. Uh, some sort of draw and discard spell here. Uh, Faithful Mending or Thirst. Uh, Faithful Mending would be the best as we would actually be able to get two activations out of it. Uh, that would probably be best. What's good here, like I said, was we were one spell in our graveyard away from casting Dig Through Time, so now next turn, if absolutely nothing happens, we could just cast Dig Through Time, which is probably going to guarantee us all the pieces that we need. Uh, Silence is looking really good here, too. Uh, we don't need to cast it this turn, mm -hmm. uh, but we have it for next turn, so we'll be able to cast... If they do nothing, we'll be able to cast Dig Through Time at the end of turn, and then we'll be able to Silence and put together the combo. So how do we how do we beat this deck? What's the what's the Necromancia target? Is it Grease Fang or is it Parhelion? Uh, I would say it's Grease Fang, uh, just because again these types of situations can happen. At the end of the day, Grease, Grease Fang can attack. Mm -hmm. So we can just kind of like play this weird controlling style with the Grease Fangs. Uh, our only way to beat you outside of that would be to play Tezzeret and either animate a Parhelion itself or animate a bunch of artifacts. Right. So that's a pretty slow like combo for us. It's like eight mana to play the uh, Parhelion or uh, you know we have to have like a bunch of portable holes out or glass caskets and be turning them into creatures but then that's deadly in itself because if you know you just fatal push it you get your creature back 
and you know, right. down, take my Tezzeret. Right. We're pretty weak to those types of things, but that's why I play such like cheap interaction with spells like Spell Pierce and Vetoes and things like that. Yikes. So we'll play the uh, Watery Grave untapped. Mm -hmm. Back again. So again, they're in a situation where they really have to do something here. Uh, they're at six life. They don't have really much to work with. Um, they might cast. Uh, they might use Castle Ardenvale here, right? Uh, just right. to like block it. But yeah. I don't think that's really, really doing all that much. Yeah. So they'll use Castle Ardenvale here. Yeah, and they can just and do that forever. They only have seven minutes on the clock over me. Uh, my client's not not loving this setup I have going on right now. <laughs> it's no problem. Uh, so there's two things that we can do here, actually. Um, we could upkeep, silence them, mm -hmm. uh, force them to do something to that silence, and then we could cast Dig Through Time and then attempt to go off. Um, Want to give it a shot? A All right. I actually... I, I actually like it. Let's so do it. On upkeep, on upkeep, I would silence here. It forces them to, you know, do something. And if they don't do anything, then we just get to dig through time, come onto our turn, and then we have veto, spell pierce, and whatever else we find off the dig through time to protect and hopefully find the combo. It seems a little bit aggressive, but as you mentioned, we're down on clock, so we might want to get yeah. kind of aggressive. <laughs> I mean, they can still just make another another human every turn forever. Yeah, that's no problem. I, what we're going to try and do is actually just combo off. So they're just straight dead, too far healing on attacking at this point. So right, they let right. it dissolve. Fantastic. So now we can uh, dig. So we, 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 we can dig without any fear that they're going to do anything this turn. So we'll we'll pay the full, uh, full amount here of all four cards. And so we're looking for a discard outlet and a far helion. That would be best case scenario. Faithful Mending being the best of our ones because it's going to be the least mana investment. Um, so we did not find, but we found a Thirst for Knowledge, which is going to be good here. And probably another Thirst for Knowledge. Yeah, right. Point. Okay. So probably take both. Uh, this order. All right, six. enjoy your turn. <laughs> All right, Parhelion. So, I mean, we can just thirst for knowledge twice and win the game. Uh, yep, so uh, I would start on a thirst for knowledge here. Um, leave leaving open uh, no I would leave the white open nope oh, uh, it's all right we got a white in hand here if they did have anything uh, we don't have we can't play the veto uh, oh oh this, yeah 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 uh, by, by killing the grease fan. this is not the silence turn no no exactly yeah uh, the silence the, like I said we, we we were a tiny bit greedy uh, using the silence but like I said uh, we could have hit the nuts there with a thought the thirst for knowledge and that yeah uh, this isn't bad for us so we'll let this resolve uh, and we will play the hollow fountain untapped and we will attack so what this did for us was this made them tap out of being able to block the grease fang so now we put them uh, down to five we're not we're not playing the other thirst no I, I i mean it's super greedy okay to do it 
um, just because uh, all it leaves up is a spell pierce, which mm -hmm. means if they do have a fateful absence, we can't even pierce that. I'd rather cast this Thirst for Knowledge uh, at the end of turn and go from there. Like that would be worst case scenario. We would cast the Thirst for Knowledge. Uh, in response to Thirst for Knowledge, they would Fateful Absence. We can't Spell Pierce that. Uh, and then they untap. We only have up one blue. And they play a Teferi. They untap lands. And then we're just pretty much locked out from there. Uh, so like right now, they're like super taxed in to keeping mana open because they mm -hmm. they kind of revealed to us that their only way right now to do anything with Grease Bang is to use the Castle Ardendale. So I've tied up five mana. Right, uh, right. Players. So like yeah. for example, if on the, at the end of their turn, we're going to Thirst for Knowledge again and if they want to counter. Um, so this is really bad for us. We don't have anything now. Uh, right. So... Like, like I said before, there tapping out of the white was maybe a little bit wrong, but you know, it's not a big deal. Hopefully, they don't play anything crazy. So this is the this is the weakness of the deck. It's why I play at least one basic. Is that we are kind of susceptible to um, field field of ruin. Uh, it's not a it's not a card that's seeing a ton of play, but with the book combo yep. kind of coming yep. back to all over the five O lists, uh, people are going to be trying to play ways to interact with lands. And if you don't have any basics, that's just going to be. Yeah. See, we could have vetoed this. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could have vetoed here, uh, and then they would have only had up three mana, which means we would have attacked and put them to one. And we could have even tried to thirst for knowledge and everything here. I mean, we're gonna let this happen. Uh, there's nothing that we can do. Um, so they can have the Teferi. Possible that they down tick here. Uh, yep. So they down tick here. Are we playing so thirst. At the, end, at the end of turn, we're gonna thirst. Uh, they're super, super taxed in to countering this uh, because they know that we can find the green thing uh, because they put it uh, right, right on the top with the fairy. Yeah. So they're super taxed into doing it, uh, but. How different this looks if we have another land in play where we could spell pierce whatever they use to counter this. Yeah, uh, well, mystical dispute, not really. Um, so we're we're not in a good spot. Uh, yeah. At least we have the other Grease Fang to play, um, but they're pretty far ahead at this point. Possibly the worst draw on the deck. Uh, we're going to play Grease Fang here and pass, but uh, we'll leave open one white uh, for the veto. But um, we are in a really bad spot. Uh, we're playing for fun here, so I don't think conceding uh, really does anything. Yeah. Four, yeah. Four, four, four minutes on the clock. Um, if we were, say, playing in a challenge or something, uh, I'd advise people to concede here and then try and win a quick uh, game three. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Which I, I, I guess we could do. Um, I don't think we're going to win this game. Yeah. How how much different would it have been if we if we vetoed the the Teferi? We so we wouldn't uh, have, we wouldn't have gotten our thirst through still, right? No, we wouldn't have had enough mana left over to Thirst, um, but we would have still had our Grease Fang on the field. They would have only had three mana open, uh, so then we would have untapped. So they'd be at we one. Have, we Yeah, we would have untapped. We would have uh, capped Thirst for Knowledge. Uh, so in the next three cards, there could have been a Parhelion on there. Um, and all we know that they had for sure. Um, so yeah, uh, I would just concede here. Yeah. Uh, there's really... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we would have been able to uh, thirst for knowledge. They would have tried to uh, veto that to tap us out because we had we would have only had three mana available. 
um, we would have just uh, probably paid the three mana and tried to draw party on there. Um, so we'll just go with what we've got here. Uh, I wouldn't make any sideboard changes. Yeah. Um, so we're going to try and win a quick game. Um, it's super, super possible to win it. Yeah, three yeah. I mean, if my clock, client the cooperates, win. the deck can win really, really fast. Uh, if we open up, you know, a hand of a three lands, silence, grease fang, parhelion, and a faithful ending, that's just the nuts. Yeah, uh, we, we, you know, we win the game from there. Grease fang, parhelion, thirst for knowledge. Okay, I mean, I mean, we're gonna keep this. I don't think it's a particularly good hand against. Uh, control, but like we have three minutes on the clock, so you know mm -hmm. we've got the combo. We might as well run with it. This is a turn for uh, Arhelion on the play. Right, right. Uh, like I said, best draw off the top is probably uh, we'll lead on Hollowed Fountain here. Oh, Surfwreck doesn't really comes out to the same thing. Life total is not too taxed in this matchup, so I wouldn't you know worry too, right. too much about uh, you know paying two mana for your. Uh, lands. Yeah, especially in, in three minutes. Yeah, so we're trying to draw. Uh, best case here for us is a Spell Pierce, a Silence, even a Mystical Dispute, but I think it's the weaker of the of the three. Um, so that on turn four we have something to protect the Grease Fang with. Oh. Moto's not loving me to... Oh! Oh, no. oh, oh we're here! All right. We're here. We're here. We're we're good. We're good. Okay. Thirst for knowledge, not so good. Uh, we could just play the follow, hollow fountain here, tapped. Uh, nor normally, uh, we could play it untapped if we wanted to like signal that we had a Dovin's veto to like show some sort of strength. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's minimal. This still represents uh, Mystical Dispute or Spell Pierce, which... Um, uh, actually, they don't know we have Spell Pierce, or did we use one? I can't remember. I don't think they know we have Spell Pierce. Yeah, I don't think they know we have Spell Pierce, so... Uh, this probably just signals a Mystical Dispute to them, maybe. Uh, worst case scenario here is they uh, play Rest in Peace. Mm -hmm. They don't do anything <laughs> here. Oh, there we go. Worst case scenario. Um, yeah. So we're not going to be able to win that quickly here. Right. Now, like I said, would us playing that untapped maybe have made them not play the rest in peace? It's possible, uh, just because it would have shown that maybe we had a Dovin's Veto, but again, we're talking minimal. Uh, that's actually a really, really good draw. Uh, so Tezzeret is like another way for us to win through a rest in peace. Uh, he can make four fours with like the crappy portable holes and things like that. Um, here, I think we're gonna slam a Grease Fang. Uh, it's not good, but it's not bad. We could draw like the nuts of like portable hole off the top next turn, and then like portable hole right, the rest right. in peace. Have the grease fang in, yep. first for knowledge. Yeah, uh, with a minute, with a minute on the clock. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, we're right. Trying to, uh, we're trying to do the greatest things that we can do at this point. But yeah, uh, as I was saying, Tezzeret's like really good in this matchup as it's something that we could just continually cycle through our deck. Uh, we could play out portable holes and make them 4-4s, four and uh, his ultimate is really, really quick to get to. It's two activations, and then you have his ultimate, and that's any time you tap an artifact, uh, you draw a card. Mm -hmm. So any time you tap a Parhelion or anything like that. Again, Planeswalkers are just, uh, you know, bad for control decks to play against, so like a resolve Planeswalker. Oh, silence okay. so good here. Um, so had they had not, at, uh, um, rest in peace, we would have looked really good here. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna we're we're gonna just pass the turn. Uh, we're gonna play thirst for knowledge at the end of their turn. And, but I mean, we're running out of time. Here. Yeah, my gonna, my, I, I my game's not uh, not but cooperating with me at I, all I, here. Yeah, I do think that we're in this game. Um, I don't think. Uh, we're out of this game. Uh, obviously, time is you know, a little bit on against us, but I think that we're in this game. We have a few ways to look through our deck. We have uh, three answers to the rest in peace, and again, uh, they're taxed into killing this Grease Fang at some point in time. Uh, if not, it's going to kill them, similar to last game. We talked a little bit about about what the tougher matchups are. Um, 
but I I don't think we got enough into it. So what are some of the the weaknesses here? Uh, the weaknesses to this deck are Thoughtseize and just like value decks, which I think are really jund at this point. Um, we're not really good at like beating a turn one Thoughtseize. It's the reasons that I have uh, Spell Pierce in the sideboard is I think it's really our only way to interact with like a turn one Thoughtseize. Because, uh, you know, they could just take the Grease Fang out of our hand and then, you know, we're going to be spinning our wheels for a little bit. And most of the time, decks that are playing Thoughtseize are decks that are proactive. Um, so then, you know, we're trying to answer their things, which means we're not cycling through. So that kind of creates a little bit of problems for us. I've had a lot of success against uh, the Black White Auras deck, which I guess is a Thoughtseize deck a little bit. Um, so I think it's maybe not as bad as it seems on the face. The matchup that's really, 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 really hard for us is Jump. Um, I was kind of getting into it a little bit before, but they have must answer threats, which are like oven, cat, trail of crumbs, even a goose, because you want to just get that off the board. So a lot of the mm -hmm. times you're using like your cheap interaction to answer that, and then they have that like end all be all of card. And so like you're trading resources and you think everything's going fine, and then they play a card, and that pretty much locks out your ability to Parhelion combo. And we don't really have that many ways to deal with a landed card. So our only ways to win at that point are to play a Sky Sovereign from our hand and deal it three and get it off the board. It's playing a Tezzeret and activating uh, the portable holes in the catch kits we're using in the early game to interact with their spells. But then, like I said, that comes with uh, a two-sided version where if they have all of those fatal pushes in their hands that they normally have in in game one, and then they're pushing your portable holes, getting back the things that you were dealing with, and then you're kind of in this like vicious cycle of, of value for them. Uh, it's why in my sideboard I'm playing things like Spell Pierce, which helps me interact with Karn and with mm -hmm. their uh, Trail of Crumbs and Ovens. I'm playing the Heliod's Intervention, so I can kind of allow some of those things to hit the board with the knowledge that later in the game I can pick off two, three, four of their value pieces right and right. uh pithing needle so pithing needle turn one on trail of crumbs means i don't have to worry about say that particular part of their value engine and i can focus more on karn um it's why i've been talking about playing maybe like a fateful absence in the main board over that protocol uh maybe even two uh and glass casket uh just Something that can deal with a planeswalker if it's on the battlefield, mainly being Karn, mm -hmm. uh, but can you know have some utility against other things. Uh, I you know play around with a few people uh, in the Pioneer community. Uh, they tried Fracture in the sideboard, so that you know hits the enchantments, artifacts, and planeswalkers. Yeah. Uh, personally, I think it's a little bit too narrow, and I think our black mana isn't as good as it looks on the face. Um, so we played through a few leagues there where like, we were like, oh, please, black mana off the top to cast Grease Fang. Um, so I don't think we can legitimately play spells that need black mana uh, you right. know, on turn two. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, that's why you don't see anything black in uh, my deck or sideboard besides the Grease Fang, as I just think the, the mana base isn't really good here. So we're missing things like the Esper uh, Triome, or uh, like dark slick shores, uh, we're missing like something like that to right, be able to make this right. mana base a little bit better. Yeah. So, I, like I said at the beginning of the video, it's something I'm tweaking with quite a bit. Is that mana base? I've changed it. Uh, if you go look on like uh, MTG Goldfish and you look through, you know, the, the deck I started with versus the one that we're at now, uh, the mana base always looks different. As I'm always just trying to you know, find the perfect mana base for this. I think this is really, really close, and I don't think it's really going to be able to get much better. Um, the only thing I could see changing here are maybe the channel lands, as um, they might not be all that important, um, but I have used them to a little bit of success. Have you have you playtested any of the creature lands? Uh, I started off with Hall of the Storm Giants as a way to also, like, you know, beat a Karn or, you know, if they really, you know, necromancy all of my, uh, necromania all of my uh, cards out. Uh, but again, it's just the problem is, like, we need colored mana. Mm -hmm. So, like, having Hall of the Storm Giants 
uh, being just blue or coming in tapped later is really bad. So what's really cool about our lands here is that none of them come into play tapped after turn three. And that's normally when we want to combo off. Right. So like no nothing would be worse than like we saw it in a few situations there where we're like, okay, we just need to find like third land off this faithful mending and we, you know, we've got the combo and, you know, we find that third land. Had it been a hall of the storm giants, it would be like, oh my God. And we play that tapped and then, you know, we don't get the combo off. So I right. found that it's maybe not as good as it looks on the face of it. Hmm. Yeah, this is a, this is a great, a great, like low to the ground combo deck. Um, I'm not I'm not really a combo deck player, um, but this this felt this felt like a mid range deck. You know, it plays like a mid range deck, um, and then all of a sudden on turn three, it's it's not so much anymore. You know, <laughs> well, like, I, I I mean I don't want to put this deck in. You know, I mean Splinter Twins banned and uh, well, you know completely warped the modern format. But it plays like a very, very similar play style where you're this like controlling deck that can, you know, just fairly play against pretty much any deck that's out there. Uh, but everybody has to respect the fact that if they tap out, you, they might die. Right. Um, so <laughs> that's what's like, it, it creates these play patterns that if you haven't like played, you know, uh, against Splinter Twin or this deck before, that you're just going to win a lot of games off people not fully understanding what's going on you know i played against people who like let me bring in parhelion like go to kill my grease fang when parhelion's actually in the battlefield and then i just and then you just crew it <laughs> right and then they're and then they're like oh and they concede because it's just like it's you know, you know we haven't really had many vehicles you know roaming around pioneer right so right like, that playing against them is a little bit strange we've only really ever had chariot and like chariot's not this like instant speed thing that we're doing most of the time you know they're they're going on their turn tapping on the pre-combat like on the yep. main phase bringing chariot onto the battlefield attacking so like, and it gives you oh, okay. it gives you the cats you know it feels very much just like yeah you just tap the cats and the vehicle comes in that's that's how vehicles work in pioneer yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, we don't we, we don't have many experiences with it. So sometimes you get some free stuff like that. Uh, same same against you know most most game ones are super winnable with this deck, mm. uh, just because like we just look like we're a control deck, especially if we play our lands like Hollowed Fount or like Deserted Beach Hollowed Fountain. They just assume like oh it's you know blue white control, and so they're like okay on my like main phase I'm gonna tap out and play like Creature X. And then you're like faithful mending uh, Parhelion into the graveyard, black land, uh, Grease Fang, and they attack for 13. And then, like, oh crap, like I could have probably reacted to that, but I, yeah, what are they going to do on turn three? But like an R set, right? So, right. You, get, you get some free wins like that. Um, I think I've been playing the deck a little bit too much, so people see my name and they know that I'm probably on this and not control. But mm -hmm. for the people out there who haven't played it before, uh, you'll get some free wins that way too. Yeah, yeah, nice. We, uh, I don't think we resolved a Tezzeret all night. Um, no, no, uh, not at all. I'm still resistant to Karn. Uh, I tried him on opening weekend over Tezzeret, and I just found that like a lot of the times what he's doing is he's coming in, he's four mana, you're going to fetch like an artifact out of your sideboard, which like maybe does something, but like maybe doesn't. Mm -hmm. and then it dies and then you got nothing for it at least Tezzeret is draw two cards discard one or two and right i think right. that that's just better on the face of it and that's the plus yeah 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 and i mean he could also make a creature like that's it like i don't find karn like is super impactful on like game ones because you don't really know if anything in your sideboard is all that good um, so I don't really love him either, and I could be talked into playing absolutely no Planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, Protocol is the first card that I'm looking to move, and then it would definitely be Tezzeret's from there. But I do think he has some utility in it. Is there ever another vehicle, um, either main board or even sideboard, that you wanna you wanna have to dump like as a backup plan to Parhelion, like Aether Sphere oh. Harvester or Heart of Kirin or just like uh, less combo-y, more like like value. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've thought about um, chariot, even though I'm not playing green whatsoever. 
um, just because most of the time you're going to bring it back. And if you were playing like a chariot build, I would probably move towards like more mech hangers as mech hangers less you tap for green. Mm -hmm. um, I've thought about it, but at the end of the day, uh, I really want to be more of a combo control deck than I do like a grindy mid range deck. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just don't think it's all that great. The only vehicle I'd ever consider in this deck um would be smuggler's copter if mm -hmm. that was unbanned and that's like when i would change the deck to be like a little bit yeah, more like, rangy right. with maybe like hot shot mechanics or something like that yeah. but i don't think we're getting copter back uh, no i i mean you can't now right <laughs> yeah exactly I, I i don't think he's i don't think it's coming back but, yeah i think that uh, was that top of the unbanned people. list until kamigawa neon dynasty came out and now they just can't no, 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 they just can't. Uh, that's it. Like, I mean, Harvester would be, like, a consideration if the format was, like, really, really, like, Bernie or something like that, where, like, that life is going to be super, super important. Mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't seen that to be the case. Uh, we're also kind of good against Burn. We didn't get to see it. But, like, Faithful Mending is, like, you know, uh, a draw right, to right. gain to life, which yeah. is, like, something a lot of people kind of forget that life portion of it. So we do gain life like incrementally. Uh, we don't really do that much damage to ourselves with our lands. Uh, like we can definitely sequence in a way that we don't. Uh, we did it a lot in the control deck, uh, uh, and we have the, yeah, the the interventions too that gain life. So I don't know if we're like really bad against burn. I've beaten it uh, probably every time I've played. Maybe lost to it once. Uh, but yeah, pretty much my losses, uh, especially in like the challenge and the showcases, were to Jund. Uh, and showcased, I went, uh, I think it was uh, eight rounders, so six and two, and both losses were to Jund. Oof. Uh, it's just a deck that this deck struggles with quite a bit. Like I said, it just has too much value and too many things that need to be answered, and Karn is really good against us. Yeah, yeah. All right, well. Thanks for thanks for coming out for the first uh, the first installment in the series. I, I, I hope it's I hope it's helpful for people. You know, I again I I've never played this deck before. Um, I'm not much of a combo player in general. So so having having you here on the practice ladder with me was was a huge help. Um, and you know I I like I like Orzov colors a lot. Maybe maybe I'll get into this. Um, uh honestly if you're not much of like a combo player you could maybe try and find yourself on the abzan list as it you know play some creatures uh can you know kind of be more like a beat down deck uh, that could maybe be a smaller introduction to this uh but you definitely played the deck well uh i for especially somebody taking it up the first time like i said on stream i i've passed through my crews and things like that it's it's a little bit difficult to play if you have no experience whatsoever uh, but I really, really enjoyed being on and uh, hope to be back one day. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sure you will be. That was uh that was Carnage Cards, who I'm sure you recognized the name of from uh from some league dumps and some challenge dumps on, on Reddit and on playingpioneer.com. Uh thanks again. I hope to uh, talk thank, to you soon. Thank you. I'd love to be back.